Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. May. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, today we're going to be introducing uh, Reconstruction, this time period right after the Civil War where, as you can see on the screen, we are hoping to and wanting to put the country back together again, right? We had just fought this war over slavery, and now we need to kind of figure out, okay, how do we unite these two sides back together again um, and continue the United States of America? Um, so the first thing is like we've got a few problems that need to be solved. Number one, how do we handle four million people being freed? What do we what do we do? Right, the the having four million people no longer in a condition of servitude where they were before right, is going to present its own challenges. So how do we how do we what do we do? That's kind of the big question that they're asking there. Uh, next. How do we handle these former Confederate states, right? That they said, we are not a part of the United States anymore. They've rebelled. How do we, do we just let them come back and say, don't do it again? What do we do? Uh, next. Um, and then who lets those states back? Like, does can the president just say, all right, you guys can come back now? Or is it Congress, right? The group that makes laws. Is, do they have to set the standards? Who sets the standards? Um so these are the kind of the big problems that they're trying to face. Um, and so big overall goals, right? N number one, reunite the South and the North, right? Have us reunited. Rebuild the destroyed areas and abolish slavery and protect the rights of freedmen. Freedmen is a word we're going to use to uh, refer to um, freed people who used to be enslaved. So freedmen. Okay, so first off, we've had Abraham Lincoln's plan. So Lincoln's plan is called the 10% plan. Um, so essentially what he said was that anybody who's in one of the rebelling Confederate states can regain their citizenship um, by taking an oath to support the Constitution and the 13th Amendment, uh, except for prominent military and political leaders. So he said, like, the people who are the leadership that you know, do that a lot of a lot of people, a lot of like regular folk, right? You don't really have a you didn't have a choice on what your whole state did, you know. So he's kind of saying like the blame should be put on the prominent political and military figures. So that's where the punishment should be. So that's what he's saying. Like, so any any common regular person can become regain their citizenship as long as they take some kind of oath. Uh, to support the Constitution and the Thirteenth Amendment, the Thirteenth Amendment is the amendment that abolishes slavery. Okay. So then, the way the name, the reason why it gets the name, the Ten Percent Plan, is he says once ten percent of people um, who who voted right, once ten percent of people have taken the oath. Right, and those are people that voted in the election of 18, 1860, which is the election that made Lincoln president, and then that was the election that then the Southern people then seceded. So, if ten percent of the people in that state uh, then supports, like, uh, takes that oath, right, then their government, that state, will be recognized by the president and allowed to rejoin. Okay, so that plan immediately we get a few states to do that, where a lot of people are like, okay. You guys won here. You We will rejoin Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana. Now, Tennessee and Arkansas were both like cl basically border, close to border states. And remember, like the further away you get from the deep south, the more moderate on the issue of slavery is. Uh, so um, like more people who are supporting that freedom. So it was very easy to get that 10% for those two. And with Louisiana... Um, especially New Orleans, right? Because um, remember, uh, Louisiana was initially a French uh, colony. And uh, so a lot of the people there kind of still identified as being French, and the French didn't support slavery, so or didn't support slavery in the New World. And so they, um, like, very quickly got that 10% and were able to join as well. Um, now, immediately, there's some backlash against Lincoln's plan. Uh, a lot of people thought he was uh, kind of being a little bit easy on them. And also we get the unfortunate, as you, you, you've learned through history, right, that that uh, Abraham Lincoln gets assassinated. Um, he is, I think, oh, oh no, I think there's something that we need to see behind this image. Doop, doop, doop. 
Yeah, there we go. Let me just, there's some pictures of where everything happened, but, um, oh my gosh, this is, just bear with me. I'm so sorry. This is a, this is a mess. Um, yeah, so Abraham Lincoln ends up getting uh, assassinated by getting John Wilkes Booth. Um, so John Wilkes Booth was an actor who was like a Southern sympathizer. He wanted the South to have won. And so whenever he finds out that the uh, North wins, he's mad and he puts the entire blame on Abraham Lincoln. And uh, so he goes in and he um, assassinates Abraham Lincoln. And uh, as you can see, like, so Lincoln's plan ends up never being able to continue. And so like, since he's not president, uh, the the plan kind of changes. Um, and so whenever a president dies or um, is forced to leave office or willingly leaves office in, in, during their term, uh, then the vice president takes over. Now, Abraham Lincoln's vice president was a guy named Andrew Johnson. I'm going to put those pictures back up here as you can see. So that's John Wilkes Booth. This is where the theater where he was shot uh, and this is Andrew Johnson on the on the right side here. So he was Lincoln's vice president, and uh, he takes over as president. Um, now, his kind of plan was to say, "Hey, everybody in the South, you're cool." And he kind of leads on with that, except for if you were one of the leaders like Jefferson Davis or Robert E. Lee, um, or if you are a very wealthy plantation owner. So he's like, so he's also saying like, rather than like just the military and political leaders, but also, um, you know, the people who were profiting most off of slavery, right? So he's saying, hey, everybody, you're cool. Um, you're, you're okay to rejoin. Unless you're this, then we need to, we need to have a further conversation. Um, he also just kind of said, he recognizes, right, the, the, the same states that uh, Lincoln did, as well as Virginia, that allow, is allowed back into the, um, back into the Union. And a lot of people criticize kind of what Johnson does, uh, because he was from the South. So even though his plan is kind of similar to the uh to lincoln's plan and let me show you some of the similarities real quick right so he says hey you guys need to write a new constitution uh and you need to elect a new state government so he's like in your last constitution for your state you had slavery so you need to change that and you need to have a new state government because your old state government you had supported slavery so we need to revote especially uh now when they're going to make the 14th amendment or 14th and 15th amendments which allows african americans to vote um also, yeah, they need to ratify the 13th Amendment and then they need to repeal their secession thing. So it's, it's very similar to Lincoln's plan, um, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, however, um, but there's like this kind of distrust of Andrew Johnson because he's from the South. And so just kind of off, off from the start, uh, people are kind of hesitant to uh, support what Andrew Johnson's plan is. Um, so, right. So, and the big criticism of Andrew Johnson is that one of the things he allows the South to do, he says, Hey, change your constitution, uh, change, you know, your, your government. But rather th other than that, he said like, okay, just make sure you guys don't do slavery. But he just basically said, and you can do anything else you want essentially. And so which leads to something we'll talk to talk about more later, which are these things called black codes. Um, which eventually change into these things called the Jim Crow laws. Uh, so you may have heard of, of that, which are essentially laws that, that limit the rights of African-Americans, um, being able to vote, being able to serve in office, being able to interact in society. Um, and so he like allowing that to happen kind of upsets the North as well as like the South is like, oh my gosh, they're putting so much limitations on us because of the changes to their government and constitutions like that. A lot of people don't like Andrew Johnson and he does end up getting impeached, which we'll go into a little bit more detail tomorrow. Um, but this is kind of just an overview of what reconstruction is. We're going to kind of dive into the, the deeper points of each thing, uh, what the new South looked like, what the um, black coats were, and kind of what were the different movements to try and protect the rights of, of uh, newly uh, freedmen. Um, 
But yeah, so that's that. And if you uh, need anything, please just send me an email and have a great day.